spiritual mother. I've said this, I'll say it again. Towards the end of his life, he said that you have a wonderful mother. Work well with her. He could not allow us from 25 years ago to dishonor our mother in any way. He would even say, you had better disrespect me, but don't disrespect your mother. He had value for matriarch authority. And because he supported and submitted to his spiritual mother, we as JCC family have got no qualms, no difficulty supporting and submitting to our spiritual mother. He has sown a seed that he will definitely reap in JCC. Put your hands together in the honor of our father. And so one more time, we'd like to honor the following servants of God with us today. Of course, this list continues growing and expanding, but we want to honor his spiritual authority, Reverend Teresia Wairimo, who is with us today. Let's appreciate our senior mom, the prophet of God. And the rest will keep clapping until you can't stop. Bishop Jerry Kibarabara, Bishop Mamboleo, Bishop Makarioki, Bishop J.B. Masinde, Bishop Margaret Wangari, Bishop Margaret Wanjiro, Bishop Stephen Gachengo, Bishop Pius Moiro, Bishop Peter Jenga, Bishop Mode, Bishop Charles Muturi, Bishop David Moreidi, Bishop Masika, Bishop Peter Gashara, Bishop Njiriri, Bishop Jonah Obonyo, Reverend Lucy Wangojiri, Reverend Julian Chula, Apostle David Juma, Apostle Joe Mwangi Mwaneki, Apostle Subi, Apostle Maurice Olo, Apostle Daphne Naila, Apostle Thomas Maina, Bishop Evans Ababu, Bishop Peter Wainaina, Bishop Mama Mwai, Bishop Dazwe Tachero, all these wonderful servants of God and the list will continue to grow. Let's appreciate them in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for the word of God? To bring to us the word of God today is one of the leading fathers in our nation. He's been preaching for decades, way before some of us who are preaching today ever knew whether we were a boy or a girl. He was preaching the gospel in our nation. Bishop Dr. Mark Karioki is a great teacher of the word, a televangelist, an author, a spiritual father to many pastors, both locally and internationally. He is a general overseer of Deliverance Church Kenya, senior pastor of Deliverance Church LCCI, the House of Bread Church located in Nairobi, Kenya, and founder of Deliverance Church Nakuru, which he called the Life Celebration Center LCC in October 1983 when I was in nursery school. He now chairs the Deliverance Church Council, which is the governing council of the entire ministry. He has been the chairman of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for five years. Ladies and gentlemen, servants of God, with the joy of the Lord, while we are all standing up, put your hands together for the servant of God, the speaker of the word today, Bishop Dr. Mark Karioki. Put your hands together for him until he gets here. Let's appreciate the servant of God in Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Every time you encounter the word of God, which Bishop Alan Kuna stood for, expect change. Anytime you encounter the word of God, expect change. Because you cannot separate God from his word. God is his word. And his word is God. Therefore, somebody say, my life, my life. will never, never. Ever, ever be the same again. Be now, put some seriousness in it and declare, my life, my life will, never, will never, ever, ever be, the be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to honor and acknowledge the first lady, the, the, the bishop in this house. May I say that officially? The bishop in this house, Reverend Kathy Kuna. 
Come on, celebrate her, celebrate her, celebrate her. Celebrate her. Celebrate her. I want you to know that we stand with you. And when God gives you a responsibility, he has already put the ability and the potential in you to fulfill that, ability, that commission. Therefore, within you is God's ability to lead this movement, to lead this great church to the next level. So do not shake, do not be afraid, for the presence of the Lord shall continually be manifested in your life in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God. Thank you. You may be seated. I also want to honor His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Kenya, Rige G. And, and thank you so, so very much. And Ma, uh, Pastor Dorcas, thank you so much for gracing us. Uh, I honor uh, the bishop's mom, whom I have honored and respected and prayed for during this difficult season. Uh, Reverend Teresia Wairimo, uh, thank you so, so, so very much. May the Lord bless you. Then I can now use the statement that has been cooked here in Kenya, all protocols observed. <laughs> and that saves us a lot of, a lot of trouble. I, uh, let me also honor the senior elders, the senior elders in, 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 in the church here in Akuru, uh, in Nairobi, I beg your pardon. <laughs> In Kenya, I want to say thank you so very much, all the senior, the senior elders. May the Lord bless you, the, the bishops, and everybody else. Now, mine is to bring the word of God. And I will do it within the shortest time possible and in the simplest way possible. One day, I, after, after I quit my job as a teacher, I didn't get an opportunity to go to Bible school. Me, I quit the classroom and I went to the pulpit. So I am praying, God has called me now to start a church in Akuru. And I started, I went to a place called Nomain and I was praying and fasting for one week. And I was saying, God, God, I have not gone to a Bible school. I don't know how to prepare a message. How, what am I going to tell the people? What do I do? And God spoke to me. In the midst of my prayer and fasting, God spoke to me and said, whatever I give to you, give it out in simplicity as it is. And since then, I am the simplest preacher in, in the world today because I just speak it in simplicity. And the professors in the church capture. The ladies who have never been, the men and the ladies who have never been in school capture because it comes in simplicity. Allow me to read the scriptures from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter number, Joshua chapter number one. I will read the first two verses of Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 1. Now the Bible says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister or assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. I will stop there for a moment. And then move on ahead and, and, and read, Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Now I want us to, to capture something here. Israel knew Moses as their savior. He is the man who listened to God, and would talk to them. They never ever expected to see Moses out of the way. They never ever expected that Moses would be taken away from them. But a moment and a time came when God decided, Moses, your mission is over. And once the mission is over, here on earth, you are of no use here on earth. Once your mission is over here on earth, you are of no use, use here on earth. So God decided, Moses, 
your mission is over. And Moses went to the mountain and never came back. Now, let me pause there and say, in the process of preparing myself, I was looking for a topic to give my, my message this morning. And I had several topics that I could have uh, used to be uh, as, a, as, a, as a heading. And I thought I'm going to speak on a topic, death is not the end. Then another one came, and the, the, the next one that came was, uh, death is not final. Another one came, dismantling death. And then another one came that the dead are still alive. So I had a choice. I decided to choose the dead are still living. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about. That the dead are still alive. So that we can be able to understand our position right now. Now, the Bible tells us in Hosea 4 and verse number 6 that my people perish for lack of knowledge. But Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So it is the knowledge of the truth from the word of God that gives us the freedom. So it is important for us to understand that death is not final. That death is not the end. But for us to understand this, we need to find out, death, where did you come from? Where did de death come from? Because if we do not understand, we will still be threatened by death. But the moment you understand where death came from, then your life is going to be different. Now, when we go to the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, in verse number uh, 16 and 17, and the Lord commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden of, you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. So death was introduced by God. It is God who said, Webwana, the day you shall eat of this, you shall surely. Please promise me something. That for the next few minutes, at least you are going to talk to me. <laughs> at, at least you talk to me. He was told, the day you shall eat of it thereof, you shall surely. You shall surely die. And I want you to know, my friends, that the word of God will never ever go back to him void. It will accomplish that which God spoke, that which God spoke. It will accomplish that which it was sent to do. And the word of God is creative. The word of God is creative. If God says now, if God says now that in Nairobi or in the Degua, in the Degua, by the roadside, there is a ten-legged elephant. Even if it has never ever been seen or heard of, it will be there. If God says there is a ten-legged elephant, that elephant will be there because the word of God is creative. So, and God does not play around with words. Whatever God says, it is. Now, Israel is in a situation. And in this situation is a situation of discouragement. They have been mourning for 40 days. And God appears to Joshua and says, By the way, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Ladies and gentlemen, if God says you are dead, you are dead, dead. It's, it's, it's important. To, if God says you are dead, you are dead, dead. So he's, he says, Moses, my servant, is, is dead. 
So we know Moses died. We know Moses died. Now, maybe I should pause a little bit here and ask myself, ask myself, what is this death? And I will make some profound statements and say that death is not a state of lifelessness. Death is not a state of lifelessness. Why? Because God told Adam, the day you shall eat of it, there, or you shall eat of it thereof, you shall surely die. Previously, God would come in the cool of the day and would have fellowship with Adam and Eve. But because at the moment they ate of the fruit, what happened? They had the presence of the Lord coming. And Eve, this is Makariuki paraphrasing. Eve told the husband, Kunakuju, he is coming. And now they were no longer comfortable. So now they are wondering, what are we going to do? They used to meet here. Now they say, hey, hey he is coming. So they all ran and they went into hiding. And in their hiding, God is calling Adam. Eve is telling Adam, Adam, you are being called. Adam, Adam, Adam. Eventually, Adam says, Oi, where are you? We are here. We are actually hiding. We, 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 are, we, are, we are hiding. Why, why, why are you hiding? You know the rest of the story. Now, previously, they would meet and have a time of fellowship. But when they went against the will of God, they were separated from God. Why do I say that? Because God said, the day you shall eat thereof, you shall surely... Oh, come on. You shall surely... You shall surely die. Let me ask you a question. Did they die or not die? I... I think this side there, is, there are more preachers. Did they die or did they not die? Yes. See, they died. Yes. If death was a state of lifelessness, then they would not be answering. They would not be answering. Because they are here, they are saying, where are you? We are hiding. And God had said, the day you shall eat thereof, you shall surely die. And if God says you are dead, you are a dead, dead. But now we see they are talking. But we see there is a difference. They are afraid of God. Why? Because they have been separated from God. Who is God? Who is God? John 4 and verse number 24. God is spirit. Those of you who had the opportunity of reading, the, doing the catechism, preparing for your baptism, you remember the first question in the, in the, in the catechism was Gaino. Who is God? And the answer was there, Gaino. God is his spirit. Me, I did mine in that language many years ago in Elbagon. So the first question, the question number one was, who is God? And we want to know who is God. And we see God is Spirit. Genesis 1.26 God said let us make men in our image and likeness. So man is in the image and likeness of God. Who is God? God is Spirit. God is Spirit. So who is man? Man is spirit. And what is the likeness? The likeness is that God is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Who is man? Man is a triune being. Spirit, soul, and 
body. So what happened? The day they ate of the fruit, they were separated from God. That is why Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you guys know about Nicodemus. You remember the story of Nicodemus when he went to Jesus in the, in the night. And, and he told, well, from the things you are doing, you are not just an ordinary man. The, things you are the way you are teaching, you are not ordinary. By the way, what is... And Jesus told Nicodemus, I know your problem, Nicodemus. Except a man be born again. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom. He cannot enter. For there to be an again... There is got to be a beginning. There is got to be a first. Let's face it. There cannot be number two without got to be a first birth. And many times we say like Nicodemus. Because we think that the first birth is when you are born by your mother. That is the way Nicodemus thought. Because he, he asked Jesus, where born even if you are a great teacher, this thing you are saying, is it possible for an old man like me to coil myself and get back into my mother's womb and be born by, by my mother? Is it possible? Jesus told Nicodemus, well, Nicodemus, listen, even if you, it were possible, this is Mark, can you keep paraphrasing? Even if it were possible for you to coil yourself and get into your mother's womb and get born by your mother, you would still be flesh. That's why he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So being born again means men becoming alive spiritually. You have a relationship with God. That is the relationship with God. That is the second birth. So now man is alive spiritually. What has happened? He has, he has gone against the will of God, eaten of the fruit, and he is dead. So he is separated from God. That is the first death which we call spiritual death. There are three kinds of death. Number one, spiritual death. Where man as a spirit being is separated from God. That is the death that Adam died when we read from Genesis. Now, the second death that we see is what we call physical death. Physical death. What is physical death? Physical death is when the spirit and the soul are separated from the body. When the spirit and the soul are separated from the body, that person is physically dead. And that is the death we see that happened to Lazarus and the rich man. You remember Lazarus and the rich man? Lazarus, the Bible says Lazarus died and he was taken up. The rich man died, he went. In other words, when it comes to physical death, that is where there is separation. I will come back. I will come back to that. So, Adam is now separated from God. He is spiritually dead. But he is talking. What does that tell me? That tells me that in Kenya today, even in this congregation, there are dead people who are still walking around. There are dead people here who are clapping their hands. There are dead people here yawning even as I'm preaching. There are dead people driving matatos. There are dead people teaching, uh, teaching children in the classroom and saying, children, this is called Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya. Say Kenya. But they are dead. There are dead people in the hospitals injecting people with needles. But they are Unfortunately, 
ladies and gentlemen, there are dead people on the pulpit. There are dead people on the pulpit and preaching death. There are dead people walking, dead people in big hotels, but they are dead. Why? Because they are separated from God. Let me tell you, my friend, you could be listening to me from right here in Kenya, or you could be listening to me from wherever you are in the whole world, but I want you to know that if you are not connected with God, you are spiritually dead. And when God says you are dead, you are dead, dead. So when Lazarus died and the rich man died, both of them went to different destinations. I used to hear my mother sing many years ago. There is revival on this side. <laughs> now, when somebody is spiritually separated from God, he is still walking, he is eating, he is working, he is making money, he is getting children, raising children. He is doing everything. But he is spiritually dead and therefore separated from God. That is physical death. Let me come to the third death. The third death is, called, is what I call eternal death. Eternal death. And eternal death is when... Somebody who is spiritually dead, separated from God, dies physically. I will say that again. When somebody who is spiritually dead, in other words, separated from God, now dies physically. His soul and spirit are separated. That one has died eternally. There is no help that can be given to such a person. Decisions are not made in purgatory. Decisions are made here in Kenya. This is where you make a decision. And that is why Bishop Allen gave his life out to warn men and women that there is a place where the righteous go. Yeah. And if you die physically, yeah. before you have made a decision, you are lost forever. You are lost forever. He quit everything he, knew he wanted to do and decided, I will stand by the gate. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. In other words, for us, who are ministers, we stand by the gates of hell and tell you, you are not entering here. You are not going in behind me. We are standing there and we are saying, you are not coming in. Some of them we kick. Some of you we push. Some of you we hit with the head. Because you want to go in and when you, if you go in there, you can't come out. We are standing there. We are saying you are not going in. You are not, that's what I am doing now. You are here. You want to go to hell. I am saying you are not going. You are here. You are not born again. I'm saying you are not dying without Jesus. We are standing by the gates. And we are saying you are not passing. You are not passing. That's what Bishop Allen did all over the world. And that's what we are going to do. I think it is important for me to say here that the church is not a political party. The church is not a political party. 
So don't push the church into politics. Don't push the church into being a political party waiting for a statement from the church. We stand by the gates of hell and we are saying you are not going. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Until you make a decision. Until you make a decision that you, are, you will not go in there. Why should you die when physically, when you are spiritually dead, you are done. The rich man died physically when he was separated from God. He went down. Lazarus was connected with God. He went to heaven. And we discover from the word of God that while there, he looked up and he said, hey, that Kagai, that is the Kagai that was sitting at my gate. And that old man, Abraham, that tells me, people remember. That is the, the soul. People remember. And people recognize one another. Right now, from the, from the 9th, from the 9th of July, Alan is rejoicing with all the saints who have gone before us. He has been having a cool time with those guys he had not seen for a long time. He is having a time and a moment of rejoicing. Give updating them and telling them, those who knew they were, you, you, you know they were, ah, the place has changed. The place has changed. Oh, the place has changed. By the time I left, it was like this and like this and like this and like They are giving stories, Buana. They are rejoicing. That's why we call this a celebration service. We call this a celebration service because we know one of us has conquered death and has dismantled death and has gone to the other side. And I want to say to you, my friend, you shall conquer. I said you shall conquer. You shall conquer. We shall dismantle it and say with Paul, Oh, death, where is your victory? That you, you we will we look at death. And I, I rem, I'm thinking, rem, remembering my daughter when she was a young, uh, I, I, a small girl. And she was, she was, okay. Okay. Calm down. Makarioki speaks slowly. Okay. 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 My daughter, when she was small, and she's playing with the others, and somebody has been running after her, she would run home. And then when she gets to the house, she would turn around. She knows that he's here, and she would say, nye, 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 nye. We will look at death. We look at death, and we tell death, nye, 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 because death, you thought you are going to finish us, but we are not finishable. We are not finishable. Death, you thought you are going to threaten us. We are not threatenable. Death, you, you cheated us that Alan is gone forever. You are a liar. We are not cheatable. We know the dead are still alive. So, we see Adam talking. Let's come to our scripture in Joshua. God says, Moses, my servant, is dead. And I told you, death is not a state of lifelessness. When you come to Matthew, when you come to Matthew 17, Matthew 17, 1, 2, 3, from the beginning, you read the story about the transfiguration. When Jesus took his disciples and they went up the mountain, they go up the mountain with Peter, James, and John. And the moment they appear there, the glory of God comes. Then who appears? Who appears? Who appears? Who appears? Who appears? Moses and? Which Moses is this? The Moses that God himself announced and said, Moses is? dead 
God himself made the announcement and he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Many years later, at the mountain of transfiguration, Moses just appears. And Peter recognizes him. And you are telling me Alan is dead. Oh, oh the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. Can I tell you, my friends, in this casket, Alan is not here. I said, Alan is not in this casket. On the 9th of July, at about 10 in the morning, at about 10, the nurse or the doctor in charge came and checked on the, on the pulse. And the machines went down. And the nurse or the doctor said, absent. But in heaven, the angel on duty, in heaven, that same moment, the angel on duty said, Alan Kuna, present. He said, Alan Kuna, present. You read, you read in Acts, read in Acts, you will find the Jews took stones. And they started stoning Stephen. They hit him with the stones. Others said, Boop. Another one hit on this side. Boop. And they beat him with the stones. Beat him with the stones. What did he do? He looked up. And he said, I see Jesus. I see Jesus. The Bible tells us that when Jesus ascended into heaven, he sat down on the Father's right hand side. But on that day, when Stephen saw him, he saw Jesus standing. Jesus stood up to do what? To welcome a hero. To welcome a hero. To welcome a general. And say, welcome. So, on the ninth, at ten in the morning, the nurse said, absent. But there, the trumpet was played. And they said, special announcement. A hero. A hero. A hero. A hero. A hero is coming from Kenya. A general is coming from Kenya. And Jesus stood up. And when he stood up, Alan walked majestically. He walked majestically into that place. And he said, I have come. I said, oh, Joe, I have come. I have come. I want you to know, my friends, that the dead are still alive. They are still living. Why? Because he who believes in me, even though he were dead, yet shall he live again. You know, John wrote and said, or Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his seat on his begotten son. That whosoever believes should, should not, but lots of revelation there. Lots of revelation. Number one, there is believing. You believe in him. If you don't believe in him, there is perishing. Tell your neighbor there is perishing. So we have two groups of people. Those who are perishing and those who have eternal life. Simple as that. Eternal life does not come at death or when we go to heaven. Eternal life comes into you the moment you get born again. That is what is called the incorruptible seed. That's the incorruptible seed. The undiable seed. It cannot die. That which is in you cannot die. But Paul also writes and tells us that this treasure, 
This treasure is hidden in earthen vessels. And he tells us that which is of the body is earthly. And that which is spiritual is heavenly. So a moment comes when that which is earthly has got to be separated from that which is spiritual. And once the body is separated from the spirit and the soul, the spirit and the soul are intertwined. The body and the separated from the spirit and the soul, the body is earthly. It is of no use. So the best thing you can do to the body is take it where it is supposed to be. From dust you came, from dust you shall return. So we are returning the body to where it came from. But for Alan, he is there with the others and cheering us. Go baby, go. Go baby, go. Go baby, go. So when you find yourself in problems, remember Alan is saying, go baby, go. Go, baby, go. Don't give up. Don't give up. Kathy, when, when, when things are hard, when situations are difficult, he is there and saying, baby, no, 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 baby. Keep going, baby. Keep going, baby. Keep going, honey. Keep going. He is joining the crowd of witnesses who are cheering us up. Woe is unto you. If you will die, if you will have uh, die physically without knowing God. You need to know God. And Jesus come, said, no one comes to the Father except by me. And he said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy, laden and I will give you rest. So there is a rest we get into when we give our lives to Jesus. When we surrender our lives to Jesus. The rich, the rich man went into eternal death. Eternal death. Because even one of the popes said there is no purgatory. I think John Paul or one of those popes, he said there is no purgatory. There is no waiting room. There is no waiting room. That you will go there and you will ask somebody to pray for you. Decisions are made here. It is you to make a decision here. And it is so easy. It's just it says, believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You shall be saved. As simple as that. You know, I had a brother of mine. And we, had, we, were, we were three brothers. We were, I, had three, I had three brothers and myself. Three of them are gone. I'm the only surviving one. And, and, and I have two of my sisters who are surviving. This brother of mine is one of those brothers who, he paid my school fees. And because he educated me, he, you don't talk when he's talking. He's one of those brothers, you don't talk when he's, he's talking. He was one of those hard ones. So I'm looking at him and I, we, are, we went to Joro with my, to, to visit my mother, who was living with my eldest brother. And the three of us are there and my mother. My mother was cooking some pancakes. She was cooking some pancakes and she was very good at pancakes. So I looked at my eldest brother went out and I was left with this one. And I know mama is here. We, we used to call her Monica. We didn't call, we didn't call her mother. We just called her by her name, Monica Vito. So I know Monica Vito is here. My brother is here. He is the hard one. So I looked at him and I said, don't go. Do, do you know that you are the only one who is not born again in this family? And he looked at me and he told me, who told you I'm not, I'm not born again? Because at that time, he was an elder. Actually, here in the Degua. Here in the Degua, he was an elder of the church. He looked at me and told me, who told you I'm not born again? I said, you are not born again. Are you born again? Yes, I'm baptized. I said, there is a difference between be, being born again and being baptized. I knew he can't hit me. My mother is here. So I knew I, I knew I was secure. So I, I told him, no, you, there's, a, there's a difference. Being born again means you believe in your heart. And he said, I believe. And then he says, it also continues to say, you confess with your mouth that that Jesus is Lord. And he looked at me. He didn't know what to say. He said, okay, I confess. <laughs> and the guy got born again. He, he, just like that. You know, some of us, 
Think that for you to be born again, you have got to feel some gunyereres. There is nothing like gunyerere. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. As simple as that. Let me give you another one. In the days of Moi, I was invited to preach in uh, Moi University. They had a missions week Moi, uh, in Moi University. So I was there the whole week, preaching lunch hour and evening, teaching lunch hour and evening, lunch hour and evening. And then I was told, oh, the president has said he is coming, he is coming for the service on Sunday, and you are the one who will be preaching. Said, yeah, Pastor Makariuki, yeah. Said, I, I will be there. So I, I am praying, I am praying. So Sunday morning came, and I went to Moi University. And I am there waiting. And, I'm, and I was told he has come. You go and welcome him. So I went out, and the uh, Shimua, oh, you are excellent. And then he came with uh, Biwot, the total man. And, and they, they came in, and we sat there. I saw his, uh, his, his, uh, his, go, his pen, which was, uh, had green color. I saw him sign the visitor's book. I'm sitting there like a very important person, but I come from Elbagon. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there. He signed, and then we were told, okay, let's go into the service. We went into the service. And I was determined. I am going to be simple and teach on God's plan for salvation. I went to slowly on God's plan for salvation. The students had been with me the whole week. So these are things I had taught them. That was revision. So they were yelling and saying, yay, amen, shouting and shouting. Then I came to a close and I said, you've got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord for you to be born again. Then I paused and looked at everybody and I said, now I want to pray. Every eye closed and every head bowed. And you know, when we tell you to close your eyes, we don't close. <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't close. We tell you, close your eyes. So everybody, every, I saw B. Watt's head go down. I saw Moise go down. And I said, you are here. And you would like to receive this Jesus. You have never confessed him as Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity. You will lift up your hand and put it down. Lift it up and put it down. And the students started lifting up their hands. And I was there saying, yeah, I see your hand. I see those hands. I see those hands. Yes, I see those hands. I see those hands. Then I saw be what? Lift up his hand like that. I looked at that finger and I knew that's not a Kanu finger. <laughs> that is not a Kanu finger. I saw him lift up his hand and I, see, I said, I see your hand, put it down. And he put it down. Then I, I knew now because of security, I can't call anybody here in front. I told them, okay, everybody close, uh, pray with me. While your eyes are, are closed, pray with me. Say, dear Jesus, dear, I could see his lips moving like this. Dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my life. And he said all I was saying. Why am I giving you this story? I'm giving you this story because some of you could go to heaven and you find him there and you are left wondering, how did he get here? How, how did he get here? And I thought it is good to tell you that it was just a simple decision. Or it could also be the other way around. You could go to hell expecting to find him there and you don't find him there. And you said I was not as bad. How, how come he is not here? It was a simple decision which you can make and it will change your life. You can make that decision. It will change your life completely. And forever you will remember Bishop Alan Kuna because it was on his day that you surrendered your life to Jesus. My friends, don't wait for you to die physically before you give your life to Jesus. And to give your life to Jesus, don't wait to have some feelings. Some gunyereres. Don't wait for gunyereres. There are no, gunyerere is a Greek word. It's a Greek word for chui, 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 chui. So don't wait to feel anything. You believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Amen. 
Now, my brothers and my sisters, every eye closed <laughs> and, and every head bowed. Wherever you are, let's bow our heads for prayer. I have told you, there is eternal death and spiritual death and physical death. You are here, separated from God. You could be baptized. You could be singing in the church choir, wherever you come from. Or you could be a chief financier of the church. But you know that you know that you know you are not born again. Your chances of meeting with Alan are zero. Ever. Zero. But this day, you can make a decision and say, I have decided to give my life to Jesus. I believe in this Jesus. I invite him to be my Lord and my Savior. Right there where you are. Just lift up your hand and put it down. Just lift up your hand and put it down. Wherever you are, you know you are not born again. Lift up your hand and put it down. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to change your life, wherever you are. Those of you who are watching on the social media, whatever country you come from, and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want us to pray with you. And everybody in this sanctuary, I want us to pray together with those who are watching on the social media and those who, may have, who have lifted up their hands. I may not see your hand, but Jehovah sees your hand right there where you are. Please, everybody pray with me and say, Father, every one of us, let us support those who are praying and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that the work done at the cross of Calvary by Jesus Christ was for me. He died for me. Was buried for me. Resurrected for me. Ascended into heaven. And is coming back for me. And right now, of my own accord, I open up my spirit that you may come in and make me your habitation. I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. Because I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who has prayed that prayer this day, who did not know you, that you would put the seal of the Holy Spirit upon their lives and give them the understanding and the knowledge that this day they have become sons in the kingdom, that they are born again. Give them the courage and the confidence to testify and witness of your saving power. We honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. amen. For those of you who are born again, I want to say to you, let's keep fighting the fight of faith. Let's keep moving forward and look at death and tell death, you have no victory over me because I have overcome death in Christ Jesus. And constantly have this in your mind. But Alan is not lying here. Alan is rejoicing with the angels in heaven. He is watching us and he's saying, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Reverend Kathy, I want to bring the condolences of my friend and our friend, uh, jo uh, Apostle Josphat, Josphat Mwingira from Tanzania. He's a member of the African Apost Apostolic Council. And he called me and told me he would have really wanted to come. But he was starting a crusade today, which he, he couldn't cancel. That's why he was not able to come. And he sent me with his uh, uh, condolences. Please do receive that. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Now, as we move forward, as we move forward, this is a service of celebration. 
let us celebrate the life of Alan, knowing that he is not in this, in this box. He is celebrating with the angels in heaven. Let us join the angels and celebrate together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord richly bless you. May you walk in that, in that word. In